Hello humans! Today I'm going to show you around IDLE, which is the software that we use to write Python code. IDLE is the IDE that comes with your Python installation. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Basically, IDEs are programs that we write code in. There are tons of IDEs for Python, but we'll be using IDLE for this series. If you choose to use another IDE, like PyTerm or Sublime Text, that's great. Python is Python, so our code will work regardless of what IDE you choose to go with. When we first open IDLE, we are in the interactive shell mode. We can type code after these three arrows, and when we press enter, our code will run. This isn't used often, but is useful for quickly running a few lines of code. Normally, we write our code in the document mode. To start a new document, we press file, new file. Now we can write line after line of code, and when I'm ready to run it, I can press run, run module. It's going to ask me if it's okay to save the file, because Python will only run code once our file has been saved. Since we haven't created our file yet, when I hit okay, Python will ask me to give it a name and a place where I want to save this file. I'll save this to my desktop as YouTube example and hit okay. We've now created our first Python file, and now Python will run it for us. Now that I've made my file and saved it, I can press run, run module as many times as I want to see my code execute. I asked Python to print first line, potatoes, last line to my screen, and that's what I see print out. I'll now close youtubeexample.py and show you how to reopen it. From either the interactive shell or the document mode, hit file, open, and now we can select youtubeexample.py and hit OK. Now I can see my code from before. py is the basic file extension for Python files. There are a few other extensions for Python, but you won't need these for a long time, so every file in this tutorial will have the basic py extension. Now, when we ran our code, you saw first line, potatoes, last line print out to the console. Consoles are the windows that show us the output of our code. But you may be thinking, wait, that's the interactive shell. Why are you calling it the console now? Well, it's actually both. Idle does this weird thing where it puts the console inside of the interactive shell. It's a little confusing at first, but it does have some benefits. Regardless, throughout this series, I'll be referring to this window as the console, as that's generally what we use it for. So I keep talking about running code, but what does that mean exactly? In this document mode, I can write line after line of code, but it doesn't do anything until I run it. When I write code, I describe actions that I want my computer to take. These actions range from printing text to the screen to rendering 3D graphics for video games. I create a big list of instructions, and once I'm ready for my computer to perform these actions, I run my code. This tells my computer to start at the first line of code and complete the action it describes. Then go to the second line of code and complete the action it describes. And it keeps going down until there are no lines of code left in my file. Because computers demand perfect instructions, if I mess up one of our lines of code, Python will say, I don't understand something and I won't move on until it's fixed. If Python sees even the smallest of errors, it will stop running your code until you fix the problem and run your code again. Mistakes in code are called errors, sometimes called exceptions. Errors are caused by tons of things, typos, mistakes in logic, missing parentheses, etc. If you get an error in your code, you need to debug it. This is the act of finding mistakes and fixing them. Python is great because there is no mistake you can make that will mess up your computer. So feel free to try things and make errors often. The more you mess up, the more opportunities you have to learn. One thing that messes up a lot of new programmers is white space sensitivity. Python is white space sensitive, meaning that typing an extra space or new line could sometimes cause error depending on where you type them. The important thing to know is that each statement needs to be on its own line. That's why each print statement you see is on its own line. It has to be this way. Empty lines of code are all right, and in fact, it can actually make your code more readable when used properly. Later on, you'll need to watch out for indention. Certain things that we'll learn about in this series require indention, and if you indent just a little too much or too little, your code will throw an error. 
We'll go over these rules in depth once we discuss if statements, but for now, know that blank lines of code are fine and each statement needs to be on its own line of code. For those of you who like hotkeys, I'll throw up a list of useful ones here. These are optional, but using them will save you time in the long run. For the rest of this series, you'll see me use F5 a lot. This is because I don't want to click through a menu every time I want to run my code, so it's one of the more useful hotkeys in my opinion. The last thing I'll show you are the settings for idle. To get there, press Options, Configure Idle. Here you can change a lot of things, but the most notable is size. Here you can set the font size to be bigger, as I feel the default size is just a tad small. Today we learned how to use idle to manage Python files, run our code, and display output and errors. A big thank you for liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell. Comment below with suggestions for future videos, and I will see you in the next one.